Hello. Happy Monday. How is everyone doing today? Welcome, welcome. If you are joining me live, please let me know who's watching. I love to know who's watching in here. You can drop your name in the chat, in the comments. Let me know where you're joining from. Today we are going to get into planning a brand photo shoot because I know this is a big thing as brand photographers. This is like such a huge part of our job and such it's it's the thing that's going to like really make or break you in terms of that client communication, that client experience and your clients really loving the photos at the end of the day. You know, that's what it's all about. We want raving fan clients who love our photos and are excited, love their photos, and are excited to refer us to people because we really stepped in and captured their vision. And the benefits of working with a brand photographer is we are creative. We do have our own vision, right? And so the other part of planning an incredible brand photo shoot is, is your ideas and your creativity that you bring to the whole planning process. And I want to talk about that today, like finding that balance of what is the balance of like making your client happy and like honoring their vision and what they want, but then also like really being the expert, which we talked about um, the last few weeks in our lives together that I've been doing, like being the expert and why that's so important to really standing out in this industry and, and how that really serves your clients because they don't always know, you know, how to plan the best brand photo shoot. They don't always know what the best decisions and choices are going to be to really take their brand to the next level. And that's why they trust you. That's why they're hiring you. So today we're talking about like being the expert when it comes to planning the brand photo shoot. Um, so let me know if you're watching, if you're joining live, say hello. I want to see who's here on this glorious Monday morning. So I just started using my heat in San Diego for the first time all year. Well, since we moved in, since the springtime. Um, and it just finally got cold enough to like turn the heat on a little bit at night. <laughs> I don't know how it is where you are, but it's kind of a nice refreshing change. I look out my window, it's like gloomy today a little bit, but I like it. I'm not, I'm not mad about it. Um, yeah, let me know if you're joining me. Hey, Kim. Yay. Love me some Kimberly Romano. Hey, girl. Okay, Debra, hello, hello, hello. It's still hot there in Florida, I bet. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Well, let's like dive in a little bit. If you have any burning questions about client experience and planning a brand photo shoot, hello, Valeria. Hello, Valerie. So happy to have you here live too. What a treat. Um, let me know if you have any burning questions or like just thoughts. It may be something you've been running into when it comes to planning a brand photo shoot and we can talk about it today a little bit. Um, one thing, well, let me pull up my notes really quick. <laughs> also, let me make sure I don't have anything in my teeth. I'm drinking a smoothie uh, uh, that I made with like, you know when you make smoothies with berries, the little seeds get in your teeth. Maybe I'll drink this after we're done. I'll finish it. <laughs> So I don't have anything crazy in my teeth. Isn't that the worst? Have you ever had a client where you're like, you go back later and they had something in their teeth that you have to edit out of, Ugh, edit out of every photo? I've had a, like one experience in particular that was just like so, I don't wanna say traumatizing because that's dramatic, but it, it took me so much extra editing that that's why like I do the teeth check now. Those of you know that, if you, ha if you have the pose method, I'm always doing the teeth check with my client just to make sure nobody wants anything in their teeth. And that's part of an awesome client experience as well. It's all those little extra things that we take the time and energy to go do for our clients because we really care. Like we want them to have incredible photos. So that's why we're the expert. We're like, hey, anything in your teeth? Okay. So, or their nose, Joan. Hello, Joan. Yeah, we don't want anything up the nose. Ooh, that would, that would suck to edit something out of the nose <laughs> in all the photos. Okay, so, but, but this being said, you know, I do tell my clients when they're worried about stuff like that, a pimple or something little, like a spot on their, you know, shirt because they spilled their coffee a little bit or something, you know, as long as it is truly something I could edit out without 
you know, that's pretty painless. I do always let them know during the session, like, hey, don't worry about that. If it shows in the photos, if it shows, I can totally edit it out for you, right? It's like just taking those extra little moments to really like see your client, see what they're worried about and kind of ease their worries. Just like make the day easy by saying, hey, don't even worry about that. We can, we got that later. We can edit that out if we need to. And that's only if they're like worried about it, right? If they like say something about it, that can really help them just like, oh, okay. I don't have to worry about this anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Um, ooh, I love, okay. we got questions coming in. Thank you, Kim. Kim says, I'm curious to know how you handle on shoe add-ons. I always redirect them back to the plan and say if we have time at the end or if it's something that makes more sense do, do, to do, then plan, we make it work. But I'm curious how, what your approach is. So I think you're talking about handle on shoe add-ons. I think you're talking about, Kim, like in the moment on the photo shoot, someone's like, Ooh, like I want more time or what if we go to this location? Is that what you mean? Is it something that happens during the photo shoot? I'm wondering that. And if it is, it sounds like you're handling it pretty well. Like you kind of say like, oh, if we have time, sure, we can totally do that. But let's stick to like our plan. Oh yeah. And it's probably in terms of like, if they're like, ooh, I have this idea now or like, ooh, can we do this also? Yeah, it's like the balance of, again, because we want to make our clients happy and bring their vision to life, but we also want to make sure we get the shots we know are going to be great for their branding and great for them to use. So yeah, it's like, it's like saying like, yeah, sure, let's get it, but also just being mindful of the time and what else, what other shots that you had already talked about with the client ahead of time that you know are really important for their brand, it's kind of like balancing that out. And maybe you do say, hey, let's like get these few shots first and then we'll come back to this idea. I love it, I just wanna make sure we have time for like all the key shots we talked about on the planning call. So this actually brings me to the first like general thing I wanted to talk about, which is like the planning session, right? Like the planning session with your client, that planning call. So what are common questions that come up for you on the planning calls with your clients? And I'm curious if anybody watching this plans on email instead of actually having a call, what are common things your clients ask you about when their photo shoot is coming up, their brand photo shoot? And they're like, hmm, I'm wondering about this. What about this? So, and yeah, Kim just said, yeah, it's during the photo shoot. They wanted to do different shots for different content that doesn't align with their initial marketing goals. Mm, okay, that's even more specific. Yeah, I mean, while, um, while I'm waiting for kind of some responses to come in about like, what are these questions, you know, you get asked a lot from your clients when it comes to planning the shoot, when it's leading up to their photo shoot. Um, yeah, so... If it doesn't align with their initial marketing goals and it's like in the moment, it sounds like it's something that's like kind of coming from inspiration maybe. And I would just ask, you know, your clients can like, what, yeah, we can totally get this shot. Do you see yourself using this shot? Can you tie it back to your brand? Can you tie it back to your brand themes? Brand themes are something I talk about with all my clients. Sometimes, um, Brand photographers call them like brand stories. Your, I call them like your brand themes of what are those core buckets you're gonna post for content on social media. Like what, you know, and sometimes we wanna get photos that make sense with that, right? It's like if you have an interior designer and they love talking about their process, it, it's great to get behind the scenes photos of them like working at a table with their textures and tiles and their design plans laid out and like showing that process, right? It's, that would be a great shot for them and something they can use for content. Um, and that's like a theme, right? The de interior design process. So we're gonna get a story around that and really capture those photos for them. Um, but like, yeah, it sounds like Kim, what she's talking about is like, they don't know what their marketing goals are or what or where, they should, what or they should do. A lot of people. Yeah. It's the most common response in my workbook questionnaire before the call. Yeah. Um, yeah. So can we be the expert? Can we step up and kind of guide them just knowing like, 
I know you work with real estate agents, Kim, so I'm going to use this as an example, but like, yeah, if a real estate agent's like, oh, I know I need photos, but my marketing goals, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, Meg. I don't know what my marketing goals are. Like, I don't have any. I mean, I, I rarely get that. I feel like people that come to me usually have a goal, right? Like if they're going to book the photo shoot, they usually are like have some kind of business goal and maybe they just don't look at it as like a marketing goal yet. And maybe it's like helping them make that shift of like, oh, you want to, you know, close 20 houses this year for 20 families. Like that's your goal. Okay. And like helping them reverse engineer it. So where do you want to show up online? Are you going to send email newsletters? Are you going to be on Instagram posting? Are you going to do any like guest blogging? Are you going to use Pinterest? So maybe it's just having that conversation with them. I mean, that's why it is important to have a question like that on the questionnaire and bring it up on the planning call. Hopefully everyone watching this, you are asking some kind of question like what Kim was saying, something along the lines of like, I know for me on my questionnaire, I say, where will the photos images be used? And I go a little specific and say like, for example, email newsletters, do you need a Facebook cover? Do you need um, Instagram? Do you need this? And I kind of go through a checklist with them of like, what do you need you know, the images for? Because if you need new Facebook cover photo, like photos for your Facebook group, if they have a Facebook group, which a lot of entrepreneurs do, that's a very specific image. It's great to get a horizontal for the Facebook group if they're gonna use the whole image as the graphic. It's great to like leave some negative space on the side for the name of the group. It's, it's great to get them on the right side of the image, right? Because on Facebook, all the stuff is on the left side, the name of the group and their picture. So we want them to be on the right side. So things like that are just so good to talk about on the planning session. And this is that next level experience as experts, we get to lead for our clients, right? It's like, they might say, ooh, that's a great question. <laughs> I didn't even think of that, right? Most of them probably didn't think of where the photos will be used. And that's where like you can talk about the marketing, yeah, and you can like bring your expertise in and say, ooh, like these are some areas, if you haven't thought about Reels and Pinterest yet, like that would be so great for your brand. Like we can totally capture like a lot of verticals for you on the shoot that later you can put into those kind of um, graphics create those graphics with. So yeah, I love this. Let me see. Karina said, check in the chat. Thanks for joining everyone. If you're joining, drop your name in the chat. Let me know where you're joining from. Let me know if you're watching the replay and let me know what are your questions when it comes to planning the brand photo shoot. What are the common questions you get from clients leading up to their photo shoot that you maybe are getting over and over again, or even if you've only got it from one client, it's really helpful for you to start to identify what those are because then you want to put all these questions. One, you wanna make sure you're the expert on it and you feel really confident in answering it, but then you also want to put those into like your client experience guide, the planning and prep guide, or you want to have that in your email communication and the automations that go out to help your client um, be prepared for their photo shoot. We wanna be answering all these questions, ideally before they ever ask. That is the, the marker of a great client experience. And I wanna give you an example. So recently I worked with a brand designer and I felt like she dropped the ball a little bit on client experience. And the reason why, and I've worked with so many brand designers. I work with different designers for different parts of my brand, but there was, you know, I felt like I don't, I didn't know what was coming next in her process and we didn't have the timelines of when I'm going to get some things for my branding. And, um, I just had so many questions all the time and I almost like felt bad, like, Hey, sorry, I have another question. Hey, sorry, I have another question for you on how this works. And that's not good, right? Like I shouldn't have to ask so many questions on her process and what it's going to look like as we like create these things together for my brand because she's the expert. So really like I, I would rather have like just had all the communication ahead of time and had her kind of like answering my questions ahead of time and guiding me through the process of like, here's what's next. Here's what to expect. Here's the timeline on this. Have you guys ever had an experience with like another business owner or service provider that you booked and you're like, oh, this just didn't like, meet my expectations. 
Have you ever had that? That's like so disappointing, right? Especially like when you're excited to work with the person and you're messing your money, your time, and then you're like, dang, this is like not matching what the promise was. If you go back and watch, you know, our part one of this training foundations, we talked about the brand promise and like how important that is to really communicate to your clients. Like, here's what you're going to get when you book me. Here's why I'm different. And here's what all my clients get as part of signing up to work with me. So that's the promise. And when you, when you don't quite deliver on that promise, it's really disappointing to the client. Right? So this is what we're trying to avoid by like putting so much time and intention, having these conversations of how we handle these kind of things when it comes to planning the brand photo shoot. Yeah. <clears throat> and Kim, I love that. The goal is to attract more clients that already have goals. So Karina had said something. I want to go back to your question. I do email and text and I send them a guide with most of the FAQs and that usually covers it. Nice. Yeah. Like that's all we have to do is like make a beautiful guide and, and add all the questions that you know they're thinking in their head. And you know this because other people have asked, you know this because you're the expert and you know what's going to, what it takes to really like have them show up feeling like so excited, so ready for their brand photo shoot, having all the things together they need. Um, you know what that is, right? Like we know what that is. So creating a beautiful guide and really emphasizing like read the guide <laughs> oh and this is something not everybody will do <laughs> not everybody will read the guide even if no matter how many times you say it um and that's okay um and i think that's where we can kind of be a little proactive like in our emails in our texts in the automations to like mention the important things several times for them so it's not only in the guide but it's other places too like little reminders of like the most important things um, but we also just have to understand, like, not everybody will read it and, and just be okay with that. That's just part of life. That's just what I've learned. Like, people are busy and not everybody likes to read. Maybe you could get creative and do, like, a little video that you send the email, like, hey, here's just a few reminders. Like, I know these are in the guide, but I just want to also make sure, like, I tell you here now because they're so important to, you know, getting those amazing photos that you want captured for your brand. And then we send that like five minute video or three minute video or one minute video with like ABC. Here's three reminders to do before your brand photo shoot. Done. Like little things like that we can add in make such a difference and really are going to make you stand out and, and basically get happy clients so that your clients are, you know, excited to book you again and again, excited to refer you. Yeah. So Karina says, I include the outfit guide and prop list as well. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Having like a style guide. I do that as well, Karina, like a little style guide with tips. And this is perfect segue because I wanted to talk about this today because I know this is a big one that comes up. A lot of the photographers I coach ask me this all the time and ask like, how do we support them with wardrobe because i'm sure you've had a client at least one who showed up at the photo shoot and maybe what they were wearing was just like not high vibe not next level maybe it was wrinkly maybe they had dirty tennis shoes i mean i don't know but it it happens right and you know when that happens we have to put the blame and responsibility on us because we are the expert they paid for us to guide them to get good photos and so if we're not really showing up for them and we're not helping support them in that that's that's on us you know so a few things a few ways I do this um I love what Karina said about a style guide I have that as well um and you know it's I have like 10 different looks 10 different ideas of what you could do for your brand photo shoot and how to customize it for their brand like Things like wear your brand colors. As obvious as that sounds, some people don't think about that, especially like, I mean, I don't think the average business owner thinks about that. I think the creative business owner, somebody who's really great at aesthetics, maybe if you are working with another photographer, designer, they might think about that. But the average business owner does not. I can tell you that from experience. So, you know, just having that conversation of like, what is your brand color palette? 
And that's a great opportunity to position yourself as an expert if they come back and say, I don't have brand colors. <laughs> and I get this a lot from real estate agents. I don't know if you do, Kim, if you get this, but like not usually real estate agents haven't worked with like a brand designer. They might not have a brand color palette. So this is a great opportunity for you to refer your team of experts and say, oh my gosh, I have the like the most amazing brand designers. I would love to just share some of them with you so that when you're ready, they can help you really create the other side of your brand, right? Um, and also just having a conversation like, okay, well, then what colors, if you don't have colors yet, like that's okay. I don't wanna not do your brand photo shoot just cause you don't have your color palette dialed in yet. What I would recommend then is that you stick to some neutral colors on your photo shoot, you know, whites, nudes, blacks for some outfits, just so that once you do create your color palette, you have photos that aren't gonna like distract, but they're gonna also like look nice with your new color palette, with your new website, with your new brand assets, right? So just having this conversation and it can be as easy as that, like saying, okay, like, why don't you like make sure you do some neutral looks then just so that we have those photos that are going to go good on your website, no matter what your brand colors you end up landing on, well, no matter what design you'll have some photos to really use. So that's, that's a conversation I have. What else? style guide, just having that conversation about the colors on the planning call, so important. And then the other thing we wanna think about colors is once we know their brand colors, we need to really, and like their brand mood and vibe, like are they, you know, <laughs> I keep using real estate cause Kim's on the call, but are they like a, a luxury real estate agent or are they like a like social media manager for moms? Like that's like two different brand vibes, right? <laughs> if it, like when I think of like a mom, maybe she's like a mompreneur and she loves helping other moms. I think of like a messy bun, right? Like I, the only reason I have my hair done is because we're on this call. But like a lot of times I just have my hair up in a bun. Like I don't have time to do my hair. I'm a mom, you know? So like I think of like messy bun and like my cute like sweat outfit that I'm working from home in. And so like, these are conversations I'm having with that mompreneur and like who her audience is that like, ooh, let's do photos that are gonna resonate with her, right? And like, yes, let's still do the next level version of you. Like if you were meeting your dream client out for coffee or dinner, what would you wear? Like your dream next level client. Who's that mom? What is she like? And like, what would you wear to like match her energy? And that's a really fun, playful way to kind of like start to bring up some ideas for outfits, locations, like where would you meet her at? Like, would it be a, a cafe? Would it be walking in the park with your kids? Would it be, I don't know, like, would it be a hotel? Cause you're gonna have traveling clients. So just thinking about what they do in terms of what locations make sense for them and their marketing and their branding, what locations, feel authentic to them, but also like intentional and next level. You know, we don't want to just use their house if it's not going to look good on the website. And this is a conversation I have all the time because people say, oh, like I was thinking one location could just be like my house, my office or my living room. I'm like, okay, yeah. Well, why don't you send me a video walking through? Can you text me a video today or tomorrow walking through your house? Uh, in the afternoon time is when we'd be there for photos so I can see the lighting, so I can see the background and the aesthetics, so I can make sure that it is gonna really look great for your brand and really elevate your brand and website you know, to the next level. That'd be super helpful if I can see that. And, and so they'll send that and then I get to, we get to have an honest conversation like and say either, ooh, you, I'm obsessed with your design style. Look at this gorgeous lighting, like natural light coming in. And like, yes, let's absolutely use your house. Or more often than not, it's a conversation of, oh my gosh, your house is so freaking cute. I love it. But I'm thinking the best move for your brand and website or your business and website is to probably rent a space and here's why. And then you explain to them like, you know, for those photos, we really want minimal, 
um, like not non-distracting neutral backgrounds that are going to look great on a website. Trust me, like I've done so many shoots and it really makes the biggest difference locations that we choose. Um, I know it's a little extra investment, but I, I've never had a client who regretted it. It's always worth it because these photos are going to be used so many places in your brand. So here's what I recommend. I created a custom list for you on uh, Peer Space. And I put like my favorite three to five locations in San Diego, I think would be great. They have different, you know, price points, but any of these would work great. Why don't you take a look and let me know which one you're moving towards. And if you're open to investing in a great space like this for a couple hours. So it's, it's something like that, some kind of conversation where you're just, it's like, I'm looking out for my client because it's not that I, they have an ugly house and that's not what I'm saying. It's, they have a great house, it's cute, but it's not necessarily gonna be great for branding, right? Like we know, we know the difference with that backgrounds and locations and lighting make on a photo. It can make or break the photo and the energy of the photo. So we get to like really step in and speak up about that. So let's see some of these questions coming through. Those are the main things I wanted to talk about that are so important in the planning session is like cover talking about wardrobe, having a conversation, having resources for them. Maybe you're referring stylists to them, you know, locations, like making sure you have a, a conversation about that and the brand colors. If you start to do those three things with every client and get even more intentional in your planning of the photo shoot with the client and you're being the expert, you're speaking up, for what's best for them and their brand like this is gonna help make your photo shoots even better and your final product that final gallery of images even better and you're gonna get more happy clients yay you're gonna get more referrals yay you're gonna get more gorgeous images to use for your you know branding and portfolio and marketing and your website um, to attract more clients who really want to invest in that so all of these things are like a snowball effect, right? They all work together in like helping us attract that next level client. Maybe you're feeling like, oh, I'm just not getting those clients, Meg, who want to invest a couple thousand. Well, listen to what I'm saying now because are you doing all these things on the planning session? Are you making sure that you are being the expert so you get those type of photos that they're going to love that are going to attract that next level client for you? You know, we what we put out is what we're going going to attract, right? I'm all about attraction marketing. If you haven't heard that term, like a big thing I teach on in my masterminds and, you know, in my coaching and things I practice myself is attraction marketing, whether that's launching or posting or being on your stories or whatever it is, it's, and, and here's the thing is, <laughs> This could be a whole nother live. We should do a whole nother live about attraction marketing. But when you're in attract attraction marketing, you don't have to like launch so much. You don't have to post so much. You don't have to market so much because your clients are finding you because of all that you've done in your client experience and they're coming to you. Attraction marketing. Okay. <laughs> Kim, I know. Yeah, let's do an attraction marketing live. Seriously, maybe we could talk about that, Kim. Just throwing that out there. Maybe we could do a joint live. I'm always up for that. Okay. Carla says, uh, I'm ready to take the plunge and looked for your full brand photography course and couldn't find it again. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Where do you get these guides or info to create a guide? Yeah, like all of this, if you're wanting more support, if you're just wanting to sign up, go through like a four weeks with me as your coach, take my course and just get everything set up in your business from like your client email templates to the brand questionnaire to your you know planning guide, whatever you're wanting to create and just finally do it and finally like level up your client experience. Um, I do have things for you. So the reason I do have, it's all on, it's all here, Carla. But I do want to tell you, uh, make sure you're on my email list and reach out, DM me, or just drop your email below if you're watching this or the replay. Drop your email if you want um, 
my special code because I do have a special code this month um, happening. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to show up here and connect with you all these three weeks is because there are, this is the best time of the whole year to invest in my course because you're gonna save money. And that's always nice to save some money. Um, and also because I'm doing some amazing bonuses, including like some coaching calls you'll get to join with me. So it is the best time of year and that is a special link. You'll wanna be on my email list. Drop your email below if you're not sure if you're on it and I'll add you to the list so that you get the emails. Yay, Carla, would love to support you with that. Okay, yeah, me and Kim are gonna do, stay tuned, an attraction marketing live. <laughs> are there any more questions? This was so fun. I have a couple more minutes if there's any final questions or anything I can support you with, like has anything been coming up for you? Any resistance as you're like tuning into this live as you watched maybe part one and part two the last few weeks? Is there anything that you're like, oh, I just, I'm not sure if I can do it. That's what you wanna really dig into is that like resistance and those blocks that might be coming up as we talk about this stuff. And yeah, it's like be open and honest. Like if something's coming up, that's how you work through it. That's how you get to the next level is share it. Talk, let's talk it out. <laughs> I'm always down. I'm just gonna go through and make sure I didn't miss any um, comments or questions. Yeah, I love Karina said, um, she sends like the guides, um, a prop list and the guides and I do the same thing Karina it's on my photo shoot map this is another thing you get in my course or in my coaching programs you get my photo shoot map template and it's I think it's similar to what you do Karina where it's like here's our itinerary for the day here's the schedule here's the key shots we talked about that we know we want to get for your brand here's a list of that so we don't forget <laughs> and here's the props that you're gonna want to pack and make sure you don't forget and sometimes I even like send, I usually send that like day before text to my clients because I like to make sure we're connected on text the day before. This is, um, I don't text plan though. I don't give clients my number until like the day before the shoot because that's a boundary I have. I like to put everything in email and keep it to there. So I'm, I'm not getting text messages from clients. I used to do that. <laughs> and I've, <laughs> I've, I've created some new boundaries for myself <laughs> that are working really well. Um, and yeah, so like I'll, I'll text them the day before and just say, Hey, it's Meg. Here's my number. Save it. If anything comes up, I'm so excited for tomorrow. Just a reminder, like here's your photo shoot map. So the way I do the map in the Canva template I have, you can text it to yourself. It's really cool as like a PDF. So I text it to them and they can click in the text message and just open it up and like take screenshots or like have it in their camera roll. So that's like very easy for the client. Remember, we want to make everything so easy for them. So that's what's kind of like the difference of like an okay, like a pretty good client experience compared to like that next level client experience. If you're, you know, last week we talked about attracting that VIP like Lux client and part of it is like making things so easy. I used to like send more emails to my clients and the experience. I used to have like make them do the brand questionnaire before our planning session. Now it's actually optional. That's something that I've changed. And the reason why is because for some people that's stressful and they don't have the time. Like I'm working with like, I'm working with my next level client who's like that busy entrepreneur, business owner, and they don't always have the time to do that. But one thing we do is, you know, I give them the option, we can do our Zoom planning call or we can plan on email. Um, most people do the call. So if they didn't do the brand questionnaire ahead of time, I go over it at the beginning of the call with them and just have the conversation. I actually, I like to give my clients the option now because it's just that like next level, easy experience. Like, like, yeah, like do the brand questionnaire. And I'd say most people do it ahead of time still. Like people like to go in there and like really like answer the questions and be prepared for the call. But every now and then I get a client who's like, okay, we'll just do it on the call. And it's always that person who like, I don't know, like owns, I recently had a client like owns a marketing company and has a hundred employees. Like they're a little bit busy, you know, like they're that next level client where like they don't have time to fill out a brand questionnaire. 
So you know what? That's okay. Like, let's have a quick call and I'll get all the information on that call and make it super easy for that person. So I just want you to know it's great to have your like signature experience. Um, and that's what the Confident Brand Photographer course is. It's giving you my exact signature experience from every email template to the exact questions on the questionnaire I ask, everything, right? Um, but it's okay to also customize it for people. I've started really leaning into like customizing the experience a little more when I sense that that client needs something a little bit different. Like that's okay. And this came up recently in my Flourish Mastermind, like with the girls, you know, one of the things we do in there, we create your signature offers, you know, and then we launch those offers, we launch together. And we, everyone worked so hard to like, not hard, but everyone was really intentional and put a lot of like time and energy into like creating these amazing offers and like that feels really good and next level. And sometimes it would come up where like, it, in the boxer chat, like someone would say, oh my gosh, they like, I have my offer we created, but they kind of, they just want one hour. Can I just offer one hour? I, I really want to for this client. Like it sounds exciting and I, I really want to work with them. Yes, you can. <laughs> like you can, you can still get, you know, create these custom offers and you can stray a little bit from your like signature experience. Actually, I shouldn't say that. It's not even straying. You're still going to offer a version no matter like what they book and like what you offer that client. It's still your signature experience because it's still going to have like the main things you know you need to get like those great photos for them to make sure they have a good time. Like anyway, so that just came up when I was like <laughs> reading some of the comments. Anything else that is coming up? Let me make sure there was no other questions. Thank you, Carla. I'll make sure you get on the email list. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, like Kim said editing. Let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, this will be our last question. So um, editing, how far do you take your touch-ups to give your final images that next level result? I'm so torn. Yeah. Um, I want to say that I stick to my boundaries most of the time, which are like when they get my half day collection, there's 50 images included and they get retouching on their favorite five. So they can let me know when they send back their favorite 50, oh, these five are my absolute favorite that I want retouching on. And I explain all this, right? Like in the emails, in my client experience, like how it all works, what's included with retouching versus like a basic edit. So one is like communication, like be really clear on what's what with your clients. And then you get to decide, yeah, like, do you want to offer that next level, um, those like more retouching, I'd say, like skin smoothing, adding filters, brightening eyes, whitening teeth, like that kind of stuff. Do you want to offer that on all the photos? And that's kind of your like one benefit of working with you. So if you do want to offer that, I would say all you need to do is just consider that in your pricing, right? Like just raise your prices to include how much extra time on average that's going to take client to client um, and, and make sure you're charging for that. And then what would be cool if you do want to offer it is that's what makes you different. Like be like, you know, one thing that I've talked about a lot in my marketing and my client experience and even when I'm having that connection call with clients is Meg Marie edits. You get Meg Marie edits included. And I'll, I, sometimes they'll be like, what are Meg Marie edits? <laughs> I'm like, well, you said you came to me because you saw my photos, my client photos. Like those are Meg Marie edits. Like I have a, a pretty specific style and like a lot of people love it and come to me for that. So I just like, that's what will be on your photos. And I explain like the difference of like, all my, I, I do go a little personally, like above and beyond with some of my edits of more than just like basic color correction. I, sometimes I, I do add more and that's, that's my choice and something I, I factor into my editing time. But yeah, like here's the other side of it. Cause you said you're so torn, Kim. Uh, and I've been there too. I know photographers charging a lot of money to work with them and they are very well known in the industry, very sought out, out after. They are very um, in high demand, right? And they do a very basic edit. They don't really retouch at all. It's very simple. It's very basic. 
I'm sure their editing might take like 30 minutes to an hour for the whole freaking gallery because it's it's simple, right? They they try they really focus on getting it right in camera the best they can, which I do too, but they just don't do a lot of extra. So it, it's it's totally up to you. I would say like, what do you feel excited about offering? That's what we want to follow. Like as entrepreneurs, whenever we're like torn about something, what do we feel excited about? What's like going to light us up to where we're like, oh, I don't want to cuss. I don't know. I'm trying not to cuss now that I'm a mom. <laughs> I have to watch it. But like, heck yes, right? Like what's, what's going to be your like, heck yes, versus your like, oh, maybe I could do that. I just have to charge enough. Like, okay, I could... I just have to figure out when I'm gonna edit, okay? Like, you just have to decide, you know? You have to decide and then just keep the faith and trust that whatever decision you make is the right decision for you, is the right decision for your business, is the right decision for your client, that client who really wants to work with you. We get to like trust like, okay, all right, this is good. Like, I'm gonna attract the right clients who want this. I, I believe I will, and that's what's gonna happen. Okay, I've decided. And you can try it for a while, and we can always change our mind, right? Like, I change my mind all the time. I change things up in my client experience um, all the time because I'm testing new things, like what's working, especially as my client has evolved. Um, you know, when I first started, I had a different type of client than I have now. Um, and both I love dearly, but I feel like this client needed something different, whereas this client needs something different than the first client, if that makes sense. So we can kind of feel it out, right? And then Karina, thanks for like hanging out with me the whole time here, Karina. I retouch automatically. I refuse to turn something in that is subpar. There you go. See, that's your standard. I don't offer Photoshop, but I am, oh, and I am upfront about it. Most retouching is um, something on the floor that makes it look messy. So I fix it and stuff like that. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I don't usually edit anything out of floor and stuff. Well, I, I, I take that back. I have, if it's like a sidewalk, <laughs> I've like edited out stains on the sidewalk. I do try to move that on, take that extra minute to like, or five minutes even, uh, before the shot to like really style the background and the space. So I don't have to edit anything out, but I do find myself editing out like stains on the sidewalk for sure. <laughs> Cause maybe it was just like a beautiful sidewalk, but then this like, there's like a pee stain or something from a dog or, you know, like stuff like that I edit out. Yeah, it drives me nuts too, I feel it. So like, I love that. So your approach Karina is like, yeah, like, and this is something, I don't know if you're already talking about in your, in your marketing, but you absolutely should if you're not, because this is one of your brand differentiators. Something that makes you unique is like, I'll never give you something that looks like, you could literally say this exact thing. I refuse to turn, I refuse to give you something that is subpar. Here's what my editing is like. Like here's what's included when you book with me. And you could kind of go on about that and why that makes you like so special, right? And like, I'm sure that's a reason your clients are already coming to you but sometimes they can't, they don't know what it is. And like, it's just one more way you can talk about the value that you bring, that unique value. Because there are people that want that. Absolutely, there are people that want that and they're gonna go with the photographer who they see and know is gonna offer that over a basic edit. And then there's people the opposite, right? <laughs> who just want like simple photos, not edited a lot. Maybe they're gonna do their own editing or their own preset later anyway, so they just wanna do that. Like, you know, there's there's always like an abundance of clients available for whatever it is that like you feel really called to offer and that you know is very valuable for people. You know, there's always people who want that available, so don't worry about like running out of people, right? All right, well, this was fun. I'm gonna get going. Um, I think that's all the questions. So thank you so much for joining. I'll keep you posted on future lives. Um, I do have some special stuff going on this month. Make sure you just drop your email in the comments or you're, hopefully you're already on the email list. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, you can actually sign up for the email list using this link. I'll drop it in the comments because 
when you're on the email list, you get special links. So like <laughs> this month, my Confident Brand Photographer course is going to be the lowest price of the year, as well as um, you're gonna get, if you're interested in my Flourish Mastermind and more support, or like joining a group program to grow your brand photography business, that is also on Early Bird this month. It's a special price this month only. So you'll want to be on the list to get that link <laughs> so that you're not paying the uh, full price when you could get the special price, right? So just make sure you join my email list there. And that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Yay, I loved connecting with you all who made it live. And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much for watching the replay. Have a great, great week. Bye.